Have you ever seen a model ship that's as mind-blowing as this? It's got everything. Molded hull, miniature sails, accurate rigging. You'd be wise to assume that it was lovingly assembled by some master miniature maker in a well-equipped workshop. You'd also be wrong. It was made by this guy. I call him Francois. By 1806, Napoleon had been terrorizing Europe for six years. Frustrated by the relentless onslaught, Britain had a simple idea. Let's just capture everyone. Between 1793 and 1815, they held a quarter of a million of Napoleon's soldiers captive. Napoleon couldn't care less. With Britain forced to feed and house all these captured men, the island state would quickly exhaust its rations. Or so he thought. Even though European markets were closed off, Britain was able to leverage its global empire and state-sponsored debt for financial growth, which meant it could hold French POWs indefinitely. With land-based prisons full, men were kept on decommissioned ships, or hulks. Permanently moored, these hulks could hold over 800 prisoners. That meant as little as two feet between berths. One sea captain called them floating tombs. To pass the time and keep their sanity, prisoners turned to craft. By weaving, braiding, and bending scavenged materials, they built objects that ranged from the military to the decorative and diverting to the grotesque. By saving the bones from their meat rations and packing them in wet clay, prisoners turned supper into a supple material they could bend into the shape of a hull. Braided hair became cordage, fabric from prison uniforms became flags and pennants, and straw bedding was woven to create textured pictures. As long as the work wasn't too vulgar and didn't undercut local craft production, it was permitted by the guards, and it could even be sold. In Porchester, the occupants of Ten Hulks hawked their handicrafts at a daily market. Some prisoners made as much as 300 pounds a year, although most made just enough to buy some fresh food or a new shirt. Napoleon was finally defeated at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815, and the prisoners could finally go home to France. They left England empty-handed, Work that hadn't already been sold was left behind. Today, very little of this POW art exists, and even less is known about its makers. That doesn't stop the work from selling. Pieces that hit the auction block recently have gone for as much as $28,000. Pretty nice for old Francois, if he were here to see it. 